My name is Bly Straub. I'm the senior curator for the Re Jamestown Rediscovery Project. And that's a project that started in 1994. Uh, it's a project of Preservation Virginia, the first statewide historic preservation organization in the United States. It was supposed to be a 10-year project, um, but here we are going on, what's it, 18 now, I think? <laughs> Because we found the fort. Oh, wow. You know, the biggest discovery of our, of our lifetime. I mean, you know, we're so close to it that sometimes we forget how significant this is. And probably long after we're dead and gone, people are going to finally get excited about this because, you know, it, it is in our backyard and uh, it's not in the, you know, sands of Egypt or something, but it's just as important and as significant as. Um, the, as Egyptology, you know, the work that's going on over there. And this is um, maybe even more important because um, the documents are so sketchy for us. Um, we've lost a lot of the documents on the Virginia Company during the Great Fire in London in the late 17th century. There are a lot of documents that were lost during our Civil War. And now, with the archaeology, we have a whole new uh, record a whole new set, data set, you know, from which to select. And the artifacts can tell us just as much as a, as a letter from the past if we learn how to read the artifacts. That's my job as curator, reading the artifacts. We are now standing in a room that we call the vault, and that's because it was specially built to house our collection. This room houses mm, almost, well, we have over a million artifacts now. And um, most things are in acid-free boxes stored by their contexts on uh, rolling space saver storage. Um, but the other things that are downstairs here in this room um, are what we call the study collection. So these are the things we need to study more. They represent each area of the fort. The table behind me um, ha is full of stoneware from Germany. And um, this is a, these are among the most common ceramic wares that we find in our early contexts. Uh, most of them are called Bartman jugs, which means bearded man. And uh, they have these wonderful little Santa Claus faces on the neck. The materials on this table are extremely interesting because they come from an early well that we found in the center of the fort. We're calling it J John Smith's well because um, he did order a well to be dug late 1608 when he was um, leading the colony. Uh, we have the evidence of Indian women in this um, time period being in the fort, and this is um, a needle made from the rib of a deer. And um, it's actually, if you look closely, it's decorated here with zigzag lines. You'll notice that there's not an, much in the way of iron artifacts out, and that's because we have to maintain them in the room in the back. It's called the dry zone. It's not looking into the eyes of history. <laughs> um, these are elements from what's known as a closed Bergenet helmet. And um, what's neat is that they actually um, dissembled this on purpose. And you can see where they, the two elements would hook together. There's a hook there and it would hook into this piece right here. Um, and they, you know, they're adapting to their environment. They're finding this too cumbersome probably uh, to fight the Indians wearing all this gear. So they're taking this off the skull piece. So they still have the head protection without um, this part of it. This was found in a cellar that was first dug in 1607 and then filled in by 1617 when another structure was built on top of it. We make discoveries in the lab. Not everything is discovered in the field. I think people are, are under the, a misconception, you know, that all the discovery is in that moment, you know, outside. But it happens inside as well, um, and quite a lot, too. 